to officially start tonight. So I'm going to ring this bowl three times. Ring. And I invite you to close your eyes and just listen to the sound and breathe with the sound. Tonight, we're going to talk about a ancient practice. Um, I really don't know how to describe it until we do it, but it's called Lexio Divina. That's Latin, which means sacred reading. So it does incorporate the Bible. Huh? I have a Bible. It's okay. You can get one. But it can actually be done in anything. And the point is, it's really not about the Bible in as much as using the Bible as a, a tool to lead you into a prayer, prayerfulness, a quiet prayerfulness, a they call contemplative prayer which modern day we would say is meditation, but it's kind of cultivating your relationship with God. So tonight, how I want to start is with your journal. So does everyone have their journal and a pen? Who needs Everyone have their journals? I have no idea what uh, couple Mine's on. A couple of people are missing them. So here. Does everyone have a pen? I'm going to use this one. You don't have one? Mine's at home. You have one? Okay. I'm looking at one. Yours is at home. You need one? Yeah, here's one. You forget it or? Uh, <laughs> I left it here um, last oh. Wednesday, but it's gone. So. It's coming. It's coming. Bring it. Have you done this before? Do you remember this? So in your journal, that's the question. Well, it's not our question. It's just fill in the blanks. So God is... And then how many words? Three. No, I mean, so God is what? Just just shout it out real quick. A sacred deity. What? A sacred deity. All right. So that's it. So just, I'm going to give for a minute and just keep writing words. Whatever comes to mind, God is, and just fill in the blank. Such 
religion is like a set of beliefs, a number of beliefs. What is your belief? Is nothing that I am, but when your belief being not leaving God or atheism. I'm an atheist. I don't know. You just literally said atheism, and I was like, oh, okay. But like, but like if it's a set of beliefs, and like your belief is not believing, wouldn't that make atheism irreligious? That's a good point. That's it. I think so. Yeah. Another religion is like an organization. I don't atheism? think there's any atheist organizations. Atheism is the lack of belief. A not yeah. belief. Atheism is the lack. Of so. I would, so God, coming back to this, that's a good question, but I kind of want to come back to this. So, God is what? What did you write down? Just shout out some words to me. Just shout it out. You don't have to read your name. What? He's a presence. Presence. A uh, uh, Our Savior. I uh, Jesus. Uh, um, an imaginer. Imaginary? No, an right? imaginer. An imaginer. Like, I don't know. Off with a word, I guess, in the story. Creator. Creator. God is everywhere. God is everywhere. Everything in general. God is God. God is everything. God is God. Okay. I like it. I wrote beard. What? Beard. Beard? God is beard? <laughs> like a beard? Alright. God is holy. God is holy. A Christian deity. Sacred. Caring. God is God. Fair. Loving. Caring. Slash loving. I'm writing really fast, so this looks horrible. Powerful. That is in my handwriting. Powerful. Mysterious. What? Kind? kind? Ancient. Mysterious. Helpful. Mischievous? Mysterious. Mysterious. Fair. Old. Fair. <laughs> Infinite. <laughs> Knowledgeable. Keep, keep going. Knowledgeable. 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 Okay. Mon Infinite. Mon helpful. Ancient. Helpful. God. Old. Alright. <laughs> well done. No. So, do you want to know the answer? Everything. <coughs> Good point. Ooh! Now you can say God is a woman, I was like. <laughs> <laughs> but do you wow. see? God is a dictionary. But what does that word point to? Dictionary. A Bible quote. See how we each individually find the word God. Each of us has our own belief, our own concept, our own mm -hmm. definition who or what God is. So think of it as the image is a finger pointing to the moon. Full moon. And it's a finger pointing to the moon. This is God. This is the word. What does that word point to? Moon? The moon. So, but the moon is doesn't have a word. I'm trying to. That's just the image they use. So, what happens is a lot of people get stuck on the finger. They get stuck on the word itself. And when you're stuck to a word, and then other people are stuck on the word, and no, it means this. No, it means this. No, when a lot, which is what we're doing, is because we all believe. All these three faiths, this tri faith, believe in God or have, they use the word God. But everybody has their own relationship and their own individual definition of how they relate with that word. And that's what I'm trying to point at. It's more about going beyond the word and how you relate with that word. Atheists, for example, still define God, they still have a relationship with that word. Does this make sense? Or am I losing anyone? Does anyone have questions? Okay. You understand, there's some adults that don't get this. All right, so tonight it's about using a text, the ancient texts, 
that we call the Bible that helps us, that using it as a finger to help us cultivate our relationship with God, whatever God truly is. And for some, it's a presence. So that presence, and I resonate with that. I call God a presence, ever present, presence of love. You have, I don't know about a beard, that's different. <laughs> kind, holy, what does holy mean? See, even all these words, we could go, we could fill in the blanks. Each word has their own definitions, and how do you define them? So, all right, that's enough of that. I'm going to fly by, so we're going to go through a little history of what Lexio Divina is. I'm going to kind of fly by it, because that's not really what I want to focus on tonight. I want to focus more on the practice. So this kind of came about. St. Benedict is a founder of the Benedictine order, Benedictine monks. They're kind of Catholics. We actually have a Benedictine monastery out in Schuyler, Nebraska. So they follow this rule that he wrote. It was kind of a rule book. He wrote how to live a life. And that's, so this kind of is where it originates. Uh-oh, it's going to die. Oh, right. <clears throat> So his rule was that wants to allow monks to spend as many hours every day reading or listening to the scripture. He held scripture as very important because as a silent life, as a contemplative life, it's not distracted. They can go into this sacred space, this inner space or sacred space in the outer space and connect with God, that, that presence. Oh, yeah. And there were no books. They're rare. They're very rare. So usually when a book was around, someone was reading it out loud and you were listening to it. They're kind of a luxury. We take books for granted today. I don't take them at all. So this is the person, Guigo, I think is how you say it, constructed this kind of actual order. And this is the order. The four R's. So this, if anything, just remember this for the history section. This is how he broke it down. And this is all Latin. So reading is the lexia. Reflecting, they call it meditation. We might call it contemplation. These two kind of get interchangeable, but reflecting. So think of it like a meal, all right? You come up, you take a bite. So the reflecting is really chewing slowly on it. It's tasting it, feeling the texture and all the nuances of whatever morsel of food is in your mouth. But we're doing this with spiritual food. And then responding. So sometimes when you read something, you encounter something, you might be overjoyed. You might feel a sense of love. And then you express that love to God. Or maybe you're confused. Like, what is this? I, I don't understand, so God help me understand this. Or maybe it really angers you when you read some of this stuff. Like, this is messed up. How is this part of our religion? You know, and it's really just speaking your thoughts, speaking your feelings. So it's the prayer part. But prayer is whatever connects you to God. It doesn't have to be so... have a form. It's formless in a way, if that makes sense. And then the most important part is the resting. Which is kind of what we started tonight with. Just stopping, breathing, and just resting in God. This is not another important part. It's not one, two, three, four. You don't start off with one. It kind of is organic. You kind of go where you're led. And they say you're kind of led by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads you to where you want to be. So normally you start with resting. And in that space, where do you go? Oh, I want to read. Or no, first I want to pray. Or no, I want to stay here in this restful prayerfulness that I'm feeling. And you just kind of just go with the flow. All right. Intentions. So when you come to this practice... Your intentions are, your reading is an expression of not so much your desire for God, but your desire to cultivate a relationship or know what God is, who God is, as God truly is. You want to know that move. You want to go beyond the thinker, if that makes sense. And so the text, like I said, is a tool. 
The text is not what's important. The text leads you to that relationship. It's about the relationship. It's about the, the heart, not the head. And so I like this image. If you are familiar with Star Wars, I think of like Luke coming to Yoda. So as a disciple comes to a master, you know, you come receptive, come willing to learn, open. So whatever that means for you. All right. Questions or any comments? Yes. So what the divine is it? Is it is it a process or what do you define it as? Is it like a process or something or is it? It's a practice process. Or is it like a method of looking at God? I'm gonna guide you through it. Okay. So right now I'm kind of throwing the the words at you but you really know this practice by doing it. And so that's what I'm trying to get to. So we're gonna be doing this practice. And then if you still have that question, ask, okay? okay. Maybe I'll come back to you and ask you that question. Anything else? All right. We're in this, oh, I need some readers. Who would like to read? I got one, two, Three, four, five. Perfect. I need five readers. Do you remember the number I just gave you? Yeah. All right. Who's one? You're one. Who's two? You're two. Who's three? You're three. You raised your hand, right? Yeah. Okay. Three, you're four, you're five, two, three. I'm five, okay. right? Huh? I'm five, or it's she five? You're both five. I thought I was... Wait, Don't worry about it. These are short. All right, so one. You ready? Yep. So resting. This is the primary stage. This is the foundation, like a house. You build a house on top of the foundation. This is the foundation, this resting. This And this is where it all leads to. So we can start from here, and we come back to here. So this guy lived very long ago in the 1500s. This is one of his famous quotes, silence is God's first language. So, you want to talk to God? How do you talk to God? You don't. Do, you don't. Okay. So there is a talking in our, how we talk. But when you're out in nature, or when you're by, it's in silence. And you receive. You receive God in silence. Hmm. Alright, number one. You ready? Read, please. The rest is there for people to enter. For all who have entered into God's rest have rested from their labors just as God did after creating the world. So let us do our best to enter that rest. Hebrews 4. Hebrews chapter, chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 6. So, if you're saying, so, this is kind of relevant, but isn't there like a theory of space? When really everything would be, I said, I said it's kind of irrelevant. You accept it, which never happens. No, no, okay. I just want this here. That's fine. Okay. I got to keep moving because we got to get through this. Well, Don't have a lot of time. So in Genesis, the very first two chapters of the Bible, you hear about this creation story. And so God creates all of creation in six days. And then the seventh day, God rests, reflects on what God did and sees it as very good. Do you know what that day of rest is called? Um, isn't it called Sabbath? Yes. And in Hebrew, does anyone know what Judaism calls it? Uh, Do you? The Shabbat? What's Close. It? Yes, Shabbat. Shabbat. So this is what Jews, the Ju Judaism celebrates every Friday night and Saturday day. They are honoring this concept of entering God's rest. God rested from doing from the labors, from all the work. So for me, for example, I work all week long. You know what? Saturday comes or Sunday comes one day a week. I make sure I am not doing anything. I am being. This is a day just to be. And that's kind of the concept of this resting from your labor, resting from all your everyday doing. So you can take a Shabbat once a week. You can have a daily little mini Shabbat, Sabbath. I'll use Sabbath. I'm so used to saying Shabbat. A mini Sabbath, so 
2 o'clock hits, usually I'm like, okay, I'm taking 15 minutes just to shut down and re-energize a little bit. You can do it monthly, yearly. Just setting time aside to just be. That's kind of the... All right, number one again. You ready? This one's hard. You ready for it? What? You ready? Like yeah, reading? you got one more. Okay. It's really hard to read. Be still and know God. Be still and know God. Exactly. It's learning how to be still. I like, I don't know where I came across this, but learning to live as a human being. That's what we call ourselves, right? Human beings. Mm. But most of us are human doings. So we're making that shift. But this is the scripture, Psalm 46.10, that this whole practice revolves around. Be still and know. And in that knowing, you learn about God. All right. So contemplative prayer, this is also called centering prayer. We're experiencing God's presence kind of in a silent, and you notice in the story of Jesus, he often went out into the mountains. He would heal the sick, he'd be in these large crowds, but he'd have to get away. There's multiple instances where he goes away to be alone, usually in nature, to pray. It's kind of how the scriptures put it. But really, in this resting, it's also abiding. Does anyone know what abide means? Go. Me? Yeah. Um. Rely, kind of? Rely, okay. Um, well, kind of to be with. Okay. Other ideas? Trust. Trust, okay. You got something? No, go ahead. No, okay, okay. Do you get, there's no wrong answers. Because honestly, I contemplate, like, what is a by truly mean? You could look at the dictionary. But yeah, but again, we're like... A dictionary, only has, a dictionary only has one answer. Well, yes. actually, I think of it more like, like a fish time. abides in water. Right? Well, lives in one way. We live in God. Is but water. A right. full immersion or submersion. That's kind of how I sense abide, especially in this context. So again, it's about the relationship. Both a relationship with God... And this practice is cultivating that relationship or discovering what our relationship is. All right. We're going to practice resting. So this, resting. This is the centering prayer. So think of a word. Don't, you don't have to tell me. But I'll tell you what word I'll use. I'll use peace. You want a simple one word, like one syllable, two syllable word, and just keep that in mind. Does everyone have that word? So first, what you start with is your body. What we call coming into our mindful body or your prayer body. So start with your feet. Feel your feet on the ground. Feel your legs and your bottom all the contact your body on contact with the surface and then the spine is kind of alert but relaxed and then just rest your head on top of the spine and just feel the body just knowing the body Now next we check in, bring that awareness from the body to the heart. We're kind of feeling the quality of the heart. Is it soft or is it hard? Is it open or is it closed? And just knowing the heart right now. mental world, to your thoughts, emotions, and just what I call the weather pattern of the mind. Is it stormy, rainy, sunny, cold? 
clear, just taking notes of your mind. Now we connect body, heart, and mind together as one. And we connect it to right here, this moment, this space. And if you can, to the presence of God, the presence of love, the presence of peace, the presence of just this. And now connect the awareness to the breath. Just feel the body breathe. How do you know you're breathing? Focus on that. Sit like this and breathe for one minute. And if you notice the mind wandering to past or future, come to that word, whatever word you picked. Just gently return to that word. Just rest. Listen to the sound, and when you're ready, open your eyes. That's the bass. Does anyone feel a little different? A little more still? Yes. A little more restful? So it's from this place of stillness and rest that we come to the practice. Number two, who's two? You ready? I'm going to have you read this whole thing. Read with the flow of the text. Read it carefully, savoring each word. The more we slow down, the more likely something unexpected will catch our attention. So, I was just talking with Bella about how she enjoys reading out loud. Yeah. So part of this text when we do it is you read it out loud and you really read it slowly because you're engaging the breath, you're engaging sound, you're engaging the ears. Hearing yourself read is different than the mental way of reading. I don't know if that makes sense. It's you're engaging more senses and it allows you to slow down and really again chew on these words. So again, it's about the breath, because the breath is the spirit. It means the same thing, wind, breath, spirit. So, number three. Who's my third? You are. Go ahead. You can be talking. Flexio. Flexio does not mean reading a lot. It means... Reading the text until you feel the call of the spirit. So the old man, he's a very wise man, Thomas Keating, but he's the one who has really brought this practice kind of to, to modern day society. So again, it's not about the text. It's not about quantity. It's about quality and about feeling called. Like, oh, something kind of gets you and leads you back to that stillness or to prayer. Prayerfulness. Mm. All right, so let's give it a try. So everyone kind of come back to the rest. And then I'm going to read this out loud. That's it. Just hear it. Just hear it. That's all the, this part is. So it says, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love. 
because of their work. And live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong in Christ. And then, you heard it, and come back to breathing. This is the chewing part. So I'm going to read this again. And now this time, you're not just listening to text. You're listening to a word or a phrase that hooks you. What catches your attention? And that is what you're noticing. Like That's it. That's the part that's speaking to me or that just hooked into me. I envision a hook. Like it just grabs on and hooks in, sinks in. So again, yes, it's about not about the information. It's about... Our relationship, relationship with the text, and the relationship this text helps cultivate. So, go ahead. We're going to do it again. And this time, pay attention to that book. What, what word or what phrase? Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work, and live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid, take tender care of those who are weak, be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong in Christ. And to return to rest. Would anyone like to share what hooked them? I want to make sure no one pays back evil for evil. Okay. You raise your hand. Same one. Nice. Same? Pays back evil for evil. Warn those who are lazy. Warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. 
Anyone else? Be patient with everyone. She's usually the one that looks me. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Now, why did that hook you? Any, any thoughts? Um, I kind of thought the concept was interesting. Okay. About, like, paying back evil for evil. So it was more intellectual for you. Yeah, I guess. All right. All right. Yeah? I didn't really kind of understand what they meant. If everyone follows that rule, then there would be no evil. Yeah. Therefore, the word would not exist and would not need to be written. Nice. But people right. have different definitions of evil. And what word going from? Why? What? I was just thinking that it, what I was thinking of that, that that was something that I personally could improve on in my life. What's that? The that uh, the paying my people is equal part. Do you feel you do that? Somewhat. I think in our own ways. Yeah, it helps us reflect on exactly. Do I do that? Do others do that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah? I'm wondering if that one because um, it says be patient with everyone, but usually no one's ever patient with anyone else. Like, that's kind of how I see most people. Like, usually they're not patient with me. Mm -hmm. So, like, if he says that everyone should do it and no one does it, it's Be cautious on saying everyone. Most people. A lot of people, but not everyone. So, that instance where you do find someone having patience. Acknowledge that. Yeah. And then even in yourself. See, it hooks me. Be patient because I'm very impatient, especially driving. But none of you know about that yet. And so I have like, oh, how do I be patient? What is patience? So, all right. Okay. What number am I on? We're on four or five? Um, four. Five. five. All right. Just Go ahead. Let spontaneous prayer arise from the heart. Prayers of thanks, praise, and intercession, etc. Dialogue with the text, asking questions and listening. Offer feelings as prayer. Don't fake it. Don't force yourself to have an emotional encounter. So now we're really engaging with the heart. What we consider heart, heart qualities, the feeling. Feelings itself can be the prayer. Oh, this angers me. Just offer up. I'm angry. Here's the anger, right? Um, I'm trying to think. Like, what does this mean? You know, you're saying it kind of intellectual with the evil for evil. What does that mean? And you just kind of dialogue. Ask, start talking to the text. Like the author's there. You know? Actually, and supposedly the author is God. They're inspired by God. God inspired authors. It's kind of a habit I have. I read a lot, and if I find something that I find interesting, I kind of, I guess, think about it in like the logical, intellectual way, like what, how I relate to it, stuff like that. Yeah. Now I challenge you to ask you. Once you pass that, go. How does this make me feel? And start moving from here down to here. So, and then again, you don't, this isn't a necessary. If you don't feel like praying, like nothing's bubbling up for you, that's fine. You just, like I said, it's about coming to this place of rest and stillness and silence. But a lot of the time, there's stuff that bubbles up. And so whatever bubbles up, we're just kind of giving that to God. We're giving that. And just say, here, here is my offering. Take me as I am. Take this. This is for you. It might be praise. It might be thankfulness. I, I am so grateful. You know. Or it could be something else. So. Alright, before we move on, any questions, comments? Yes. Well, I don't really understand that picture. So <laughs> well, like, it's Jesus and this comes I from think the, the wrong person's holding the cup. This this was for a different class. So this is actually originates out of Orthodox Christianity. They do a lot of, it's called iconography, icons. So this is an icon of Jesus praying in the garden before he is betrayed and he goes on trial 
which leads to him getting crucified. It's kind of the start of that whole East, is it Easter? Yes, it's Easter narrative. So that's him praying in the, in the garden. Suppose, you know, the angel, the angel probably represents God's presence. It's kind of a manifestation of God. Yes? Why does it say, take this cup of suffering away from me? Because that's what it says in the scripture. He goes into the garden, and he knows he's about to be betrayed. He knows he is about to get nails to a cross, to a piece of wood, or a tree. They don't know. He knows he's going to go through this immense amount of torture and suffering. And he comes to God, and that is what he's feeling, anguish. There's even a place in the Gospel of Luke where he's so distraught that he sweats blood. He's sweating blood because he's so in this anguish. And he just, that's his prayer. Please. And he, Abba is father. Daddy is kind of what it is. And that was how he called God. He said, Father, Daddy, please take this away from me. And then he goes, well, it's not my will, it's your will. Your will be done. I am here to serve you. So that's kind of, that's the prayer. I guess that's why I put it there, because what a prayer that is. That's talk about offering your feelings. Okay, two more questions. What's the IC and XC symbols around his head in the circle? Jesus Christ. That's oh. the symbolism. It's Greek. And also, why did, if it Abba means father, then why does it say father, father, everything is possible? With you? I did that. Because I put that in as the prayer. That does not look like a garden. I put you a bunch of rocks with a few plants. I don't know the symbol. It's a mountain. All right. Any, any other before we go to the final? All right. So, now this time. I'm going to spend just a couple of minutes. I'm going to read it and just listen to it. And now notice the heart. What arises in your heart? What bubbles up? What thoughts? What emotions? And how can that be prayer for you? And if nothing, then, then rest in just the listening. Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. And live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful. Never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you who belong in Christ. You know what? I thought that's just right about your experience tonight. 